Welcome to the Cravecast, everyone. I'm your host, Eric Mack, and I'm joined by Stephen Beecham, Kelsey Adams, Bonnie Burton, and Jeff Sparkman at the CNET studio there in San Francisco. And also, I believe, in Chile, Minnesota, I'm assuming, Anthony <laughs> DeMonico. Or Minnesota, Chile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and once again, I'm here live from Taos, New Mexico, in the offices of the Taos News, the top weekly newspaper in the United States, six out of the last eight years. That's crazy. And a generous local institution here that's willing to share its T1 line with us. So thank you very much. <laughs> that was like the best product placement <laughs> I've heard in a while. The sweetest smelling paper in exactly. the world. Exactly. Yes, there you go. Um, so today we're going to be talking about 2014. It's our year in review. Was 2014 the year of the geek? Was it the geekiest year yet? We're going to be looking back on some of our coverage from the past year in uh, terms of tech slash nerd slash geek culture and try to make the case for that. If you want to join in on the discussion uh, and say yes or no to 2014 year of the geek, <laughs> uh, do so. Um, I'm keeping track of the tweet deck thing here at Crave. Uh, and also on our YouTube page, you can go to the CNET YouTube uh, page and we're also on live stream there's chat rooms there as well so we'll uh, if you want to chime in uh, head there so uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it uh, you know first there were a lot of stories that we covered uh, at Crave in 2014 of some really some examples of really inspiring uses of technology kind of going mainstream and one of them you covered Bonnie Burton oh, okay uh, at the you know the largest audience in the world at the World Cup, tell us about it. Oh God! Okay, so the there was going to be um, someone who had never walked before using a uh, robotic exoskeleton to do so, and it was a lot of there's a lot of hype building up to this um, because it had never been done before. It's going to be done on live TV. It's going to be part of the opening ceremonies for the World Cup, and all of us, especially those of us who are really excited about robotics and exoskeleton technology. We're, we're watching this, um, and we couldn't wait. We wanted to see how long this was going to be, how big a you know production it was going to be. Sadly, so I was on a flight, uh, I think, to L.A. when it was happening, so I was just constantly checking the media, and it hardly it got hardly any airtime because instead, I guess, most of the uh, cameramen were fixated on um, cheerleaders or no. hot ladies in the audience because this was... You know, he didn't really move that much, but he did stand and kick uh, the ball. And so that's what you see right there. That's it. That's all that happened. It was like three seconds. You can, uh, so you didn't, you ever, you didn't get you didn't get to watch him walk out. You didn't get to watch him walk out, camera. which he did. You didn't get to watch um, the fanfare for it. If you were there uh, at the World Cup itself, then you probably got to see it. But unfortunately, if you were watching online or if you were... Uh, watching via television, uh, none of the cameras were focused on it, except for, I think, one camera. And luckily, that got online pretty quickly. And international press, of course, had it first, and then slowly but surely, we got it. And I was glued to this because I had been watching all the videos and reporting about it um, of, you know, just the development and just... I mean, this is amazing technology, and this helps people walk again. This is something that deserves its own you know, fanfare, not just World Cup soccer goes soccer, but you can I see don't in know. his face in that moment, that one moment that they did film. Yeah, he looked like he look was how really... excited he is. And yeah. also, you know, I know this is just, you know, a few seconds at the beginning of the World Cup, but hopefully at some point we'll maybe get to see a whole soccer game played with exoskeletons. Like it would be so great if, you know, we get to see stuff like this happening more and more and more. So I was super excited. A lot of people in tech were super excited. <laughs> Unfortunately, sports journalists weren't. And so we didn't get a lot of video footage. But I'm hoping that when they do it again, uh, it'll get a little bit more kudos. But I was super stoked. And I'm sure that guy was. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. So, yay. And actually, Michelle Starr of Crave Australia has covered a lot of... Um prostheses, mind-controlled, paralyzed people doing things oh, like yeah. before this year, just this year alone. So it seems to be a burgeoning field here. Yeah, if you do a search on CNET for exoskeleton, you'll see most of our stories, or a lot of the stories are from 2014. And thank you for bringing that up, because, yeah, Michelle's been writing a bunch of stories about it, too. We're, we're all pretty excited about this yeah. technology. <laughs> um, and it's exciting to see where this is going to go. Uh, not just robotics and Android technology, but and not phone, I mean actual Android Blade Runner style. 
uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. And it got to the point where there was uh, just a couple of months ago, there was a story that I saw online somewhere a guy who was accident and he was engaged um, to his fiance right. and he really wanted to be able to walk down the aisle. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he used a, a similar thing to what was at the World Cup. And I remember seeing the story and actually thinking to myself, like, should I, should, should I cover this? Because there's a lot of these stories out there. It's like, because it's, it's becoming yeah. less, it's, it's so common, it almost isn't news anymore. Well, I, don't, I don't know that everyone feels that honestly, way. Honestly, I don't but. think it's not necessarily that it's not news. I think it's awesome that we're getting more and more stories like this. Totally. And I think the same goes, I mean, that used to be with drones, right? We'd right. get one drone story and go, oh my God, the wave of the future. And now it's like, there's mistle toe drones and TGIF, you know. <laughs> attacking people so I mean, but, and we need this stuff to get more and more common because yeah. otherwise it won't get down to actual i mean to, to more people you know yeah. instead yeah. of we, one experimental person yeah it's not we haven't really. reached like exoskeleton hipster status yet. oh god yeah. no <laughs> i know right i'm waiting for the all exoskeleton band or uh the exoskeleton coachella tent or something i don't know <laughs> but we have gone there with drones for example there was a lost drone like like a lost pet sign by my park. <gasps> There's a lost drone yeah, sign. Yeah. Oh my god, that's they had brilliant. a map of the area it might have been lost oh. in, and then said probably in here, definitely in here. Oh, yeah. poor little drone. That. That's a Pixar movie. Yeah, really. You know, my lost little drone. Another technology I feel like is getting to that point, especially this past year, is with uh, 3D printing. Um, mm -hmm. I went to a couple of maker fairs this year, and it's everyone's got like 3D printed prostheses and and uh you know uh 3d printed mechanical hands and then there's some there were some really novel examples um this year i don't know if any of us wrote about these but there was an example of um uh, in a surgery there was uh, a five-year-old who needed some specific it was the heart uh, was it was it was it a part of the heart like a valve or something oh, no we've like had some, no. okay we've had more than one story about surgeons saving babies with 3d printing yeah, that's the one there that I that I was thinking of, and I forget the part, but well, yeah, they as long as they don't print out a brand new baby, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Not yet. Give that a few more years. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't have to. And there was a really interesting one where a guy had uh, had had part of his fingertip cut off. This is back from earlier in the year, uh, and he couldn't get in, in. He couldn't navigate the insurance, or couldn't get the insurance to pay for having his fingertip replaced and he actually figured out how to create his own prosthetic wow. flexing fingertip. I'm surprised was, he didn't make it out of Lego because we've gotten a lot of Lego stories that have yeah. been replacing things. So just waiting for the Lego heart, Lego the Lego man. tips, <laughs> Lego so fingers. Live in America, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. That is, <laughs> that's the ultimate use of a 3D printer other than 3D printing actual companions, which I'm planning on doing. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's funny how 3D printers have gotten into pop culture, too. I was just doing a Portlandia binge watch um, on Netflix <laughs> of the most recent, I think it was the most recent season, and the mayor of Portland that's played by Kyle McLaughlin, as you know, from Twin Peaks and Dune and whatever, and on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. Uh, he his character tried to three print us three D print a school and teachers or something because the funding got cut, <laughs> and I think people it, it's actually a good uh, commentary though comedic that some people think you can print anything with a three D three D printer, and so it's interesting to note uh, how much well, you can print, but also uh, I think people might be a little misled that they can print anything and everything, kind of like when the three D gun. 3D printed gun thing came about. Mm. I think yeah. that was last year, yeah. and it made a Law and Order episode or something. I think Criminal Minds had an episode on it, and it's just it got to be this overhyped thing of oh my god, now all these kids are going to make guns and shoot each other, and it's not quite there yet. It explodes in mm. your hand. It's like making grenades out of Mentos and cola <laughs> and saying I'm going to attack a school with this. You just can't do that but anyway i mean you shouldn't anyway but i'm yeah, just yeah. saying with 3d printing it's it's interesting to see how far it's come and how commonplace it is which i don't think we would have said that last well they year. were three they 3d printed something in space just recently like yeah. last month right yeah they did the first yeah. test of that so well, um, I like on the apollo mission i remember in the movie oh right when when they have some problem with an air filter oh yeah, 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 yeah. all these scientists come it's in and they say they dump that. all this stuff on the table and they're like okay make an air filter out favorite. of this stuff yeah but now they can just 3d print it i know i feel like, like people like, on earth can be like oh i'm going to send you the specs for that, that it's kind of sad because i feel like if they redid macgyver now 
It would just be the <laughs> dude with a 3D it printer. 3D it wouldn't be like, I can get out I can get out of this prison cell with a coffee filter and a rubber band. It would be like, I'll just 3D print a key. Yeah, but where is he going to keep the printer all the time? I don't know. I'm sure they'll make pocket printers He'll get one point. of those pens, the 3D yeah. pens. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. He'll or I write, guess it depends on what channel it's on. He'll write a key. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with you. It's funny that... You can you can three D print so many things that's kind of taking away the DIY if you just have the specs and you're done. Yeah, it's uh, oh, I can find that on the internet. Let me Google that three D print yeah. stuff yeah. real quick. Just scrolling so down our list here, we've got oh um, yeah three D printed uh, car, three D printed Force Awakens cross guard lightsaber. Oh, and artifacts have, from the home museum. I have a story that's going up today about the White House have first time ever three D printed ornaments. They did a oh, instructables okay. contest oh, cool. um, where they asked the public to basically submit three D ornament ideas, and five were chosen. And they will be, I think, in the east wing of the White House on the tree, but also they will be kept at the Smithsonian after the holidays. But a few of the ornaments were like, here's a 3D model of the Library of Congress reading room. <laughs> and then the other one was like, you know, actual star that's right. supposed to like signify peace. And it's just very interesting. And you can, if you want to make them yourselves, all of the specs are on Instructables. <clears throat> so you can actually print out, if you have a 3D printer, uh, the same exact ornaments that will be on the tree at the White House. So I oh, thought nice. that was kind of cool. So, um, And that was put on by Instructables, uh, White House, and Smithsonian. So they all got together for this challenge, and it's pretty dang cool. So so some of the folks in the YouTube chat room are, are saying that uh, you know this was a big year for smartwatches. And I'm just curious, do mm. any of us own Sorry. smartwatches? No. And do we no. consider that a geeky... I, I have one, and I have to actually send it back because so it's a review unit, but and I have to, <laughs> uh, it, and it's been sitting in a drawer for like two weeks. I like forget Aww. that I have it. Um, I, I, nobody I, has one? I can't afford yeah. one. I'm a writer. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, actually I have a, actually have a pebble that I bought Ooh. probably six to nine months ago, but it's sitting in a drawer for, it's been sitting in a drawer for the last three months or so. I wow. just got so sick of wearing it that it's, Why did I don't you get know, sick of why did you get so well, well, I don't know. I mean, there's just not really... I have my phone with me at all times. I don't need my wrist buzzing in addition to the phone buzzing on my desk every time someone says something to me in an email or on Twitter or something. <laughs> I mean, so it, what our yeah. reviewers say is that it's helpful to have it on your wrist so you don't have to look in your pocket for your phone. Um, and I thought that was kind of ridiculous. I don't so. know. I always thought the phone was kind <laughs> of like a new uh, version of a pocket watch where you always had it in your pocket, kind of like, you, you know... In old timey fob. days when you have a fob, right? And you'd put it in your pocket and that's how you would tell time. But I don't know, like with smartwatches, I'd always be worried all my personal information would be available for anyone looking at my wrists. And I don't want them to know how many steps I take. That's why I don't have the bracelet for Fitbit. I have the pager thing that you put in your pocket because I don't want people to know how to, how to shape I am. I mean, they can already tell looking at me. <laughs> I already, yeah, I already know how many steps I'm not taking. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't need a watch to tell me that. I don't uh, think it's going to be geeky enough until you can do video conferencing with your friends and you're walking around going, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. that's when it's like going to be super geeky. holographic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Once yeah. we get yeah. the, the we get to that point. Once we get the <laughs> Help Me <laughs> Obi Wan hologram yeah. or we get a food replicator <laughs> or something on there that uh, a laser, a yeah. laser, like a James Bond laser. Yeah, a three D. That's not too much to ask. Three D printer, three D printer pen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we're being very needy right now as tech journalists, but it is. I just. I mean, there's certain things that I still want that we haven't got. Like, I, we haven't gotten our personal Stargate. We haven't yeah. gotten a TARDIS. Maybe you haven't. Well, oh, well, yeah. Oh, oh, I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, I feel like, you know, travel is still cumbersome. If there's a way that I can be, you know, uh, I don't know, spocked to different places, if you will, then. Uh, Elon Musk. Did he? Did Elon Musk come out with his tube transport this year? Was Not that yet. this year? Eric, you no, were the but Elon he came Musk up with the transport. idea, right? Right. He, he released the <laughs> Every plans time for you it. say tube transport, I think of what banks. Was it? Remember when they used to the you could, Oh yeah, yeah. The Hyperloop. Or, or <laughs> um, uh, there was a store that did that too. Yeah, the remember when you would go to banks and you would go to the window? Maybe they just had this in the Midwest, but they had that tube suction delivery system. They had it in, oh, yeah. in the movie oh, yeah. Brazil oh, we, too. We still have those, Bonnie. Yeah. If we <laughs> could do that exist. with people <laughs> and just stick me in there and send me to LA, that that's what Elon Musk wants to do. That's what he wants to do. Oh, hurry up, Elon! Hurry up. So. So one last you know bit of inspiring tech from the last year, I, I think this actually tops the list, at least for me personally, of like the geekiest, most awesome thing that happened all year, and that's the whole Rosetta thing. Yeah. You know, the European Space Agency landing on the comet. I should say bouncing three times on the comet, <laughs> uh, and kind of falling into a, a crater, but it's still there. And then 
know, Rosetta is still circling the comet for the next year or so. And I, you know, I just, I just continue to marvel at the geometry that went into actually making that happen and actually landing on the thing, even if it wasn't a perfect landing. I mean, it, it still happened. I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? I mean, that just kind of takes the cake. The long-term planning, for example. It's hard to wrap your head around it, actually. Yeah. Ten-year I mean, flight. It was. It's, it's you know, it's difficult. Like with the moon landing, we had everything was on TV basically, right? And we could watch it. And this one. It's kind of a little different, but it's just hard to wrap your head around what, what's happening with that. And just like, like, just how how <clears throat> detailed everything had to be. It's like, yeah, it bounced a couple of times, but like, I have trouble navigating through doors. <laughs> <laughs> and not yeah, even in space, exactly. just regular doors. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Cut Rosetta some slack. Yeah. Most of us are klutzes. Why not this? I fell down my stairs the other day. On yeah, the I felt slipped upstairs a few once. stairs. And... I've done that. Yeah, I've done... So here's the question, though. Geekier moment, more important and more geeky moment. Uh, curiosity landing or Rosetta? Oh. Mm. What do you think? I'm going to say curiosity just because I have friends that work at JPL, and if I don't say the <laughs> other, they'll kill me. But I think it all is pretty geeky. I mean, it's space. It's hard not to. It's not like it's a. I don't know. I, to me, it's like all space-related things are pretty awe-inspiring and geeky, and it's hard to like put yeah. one over the other because well, say, they need each other. Awe-inspiring. There's some hope that the thing <laughs> might wake up again, right, when it gets closer oh, to the right. sun. And it gets, yeah. Can you imagine how exciting it would be to be the people who see the telemetry starting back oh, up? Yeah, and right. oh, yeah. like, it's not dead. It's awake. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say I, that. You know, no, I, I do have moment. a question, though. I think we covered this in past Cravecast when we've done stuff about space. Do you think that sci-fi and movies have made us impatient about the space program and we're just like, eh, where's our spaceship battles? Where, where's our alien proof of alien life? Where's our... That's a good question. You know what I mean? And I, I wonder, especially with the next generation and the next generation after that, if when they watch this stuff, if they're as inspired <laughs> and, and struck by the wonderment of it because we're from a generation... Well, I'm pretty old, but most of us are from a generation <laughs> where this is pretty rad, and this is something that and I just said rad, so that should show you how old I am. Of of space stuff, you're like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening, and then you have a generation that's like, eh, when is there going to be a battle? There's no Yoda. Let's ask Anthony. <laughs> I know, Anthony, are you the youngest? How do you feel about all this? Well, I, I mean, I yeah, it is a really good question. So I've I've definitely thought on occasion, like, why aren't we on Mars yet? Why haven't we gotten there? So it's not like those big things, like, why aren't we, you know, why aren't we on Tatooine having a space battle? Or right. why aren't we, you know, why aren't we doing all those sorts of crazy things? It's like, why aren't we doing some of these more? I mean, we're getting towards a point where we're going to be on Mars eventually. But it, it's really, you know, I've thought on many occasions, like, why aren't we there yet? Yeah. And that's probably been influenced by... You know, Star Trek, Star Wars, and all the other crap I watched as a kid. You know, the funny thing, too, is I think the reason that we had such a space race wasn't because we were trying to get there. We were trying to get there before Russia. Exactly. Like, we are trying to get exactly. there before other planets. Or not other planets, sorry, <laughs> other countries. Sorry, sorry. Spoiler alert. Russia's not a planet. No, but, and we don't really well, have that. and other planets. Yeah, we don't really have that right now. I mean, I know North Korea is really trying, but yeah. it's not like we have... We have international space stations where we're all working together. I mean, there's even the lonely little ISO robot up there, you know, talking to lonely astronauts. So, I mean, we're all working together. It's not like we're trying to beat one country out of the other to get to Mars. So you feel we don't do our best work when we're cooperative. I know. Exactly. I feel like if we were just cold war world uh, paranoid <laughs> we jerks. We need a minor alien aggressor. I've been saying no. we need we need a Watchmen ending like nobody's business. Like <laughs> I still, I mean, I know that's a horrible thing to say right now, but honestly, I think humanity would come together if we had an alien invasion. I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying it could happen. But it's not going to happen anytime soon because we can't even get to Mars yet. Ne so. Neon Iguana Neon Iguana in the YouTube chat room wants to know where the Fifth Element food pills are. And I, I think know. that's legit. We should be able to do that. <laughs> well, the Star Trek food replicator. I think we've been all wanting that. But once we find out what the food's made of, <laughs> we don't really want it anymore. I read this like guy saying that green. he had generated a sort of perfect vitamin Soylent. mineral thing. That oh, he yeah, had. we have Soylent. Soylent, yeah. That he was eating. Wait, what were you saying, Kelsey? You were actually saying real stuff. <laughs> well, I read a while back this guy was saying he had calculated a kind of generic food thing with all the vitamins and minerals. Oh, meat. right. But it sounded incredibly dangerous, and frankly, I'm surprised he lived. So. Well, also, also sounded really gross. Too. Yeah, I mean, well, he wasn't excited about food though. You it's know? like we really haven't learned. Neither am I. But I'm not going to eat something that looks like. It's like we have not learned anything from Willy Wonka. 
Have we not <laughs> remember that gum? I don't think we have that gum that tastes like a five. Anyway, I, we digress. The don't don't gum. taunt the squirrels. In I think we, we went there. Yeah, in yeah spirit, I digress. Yes. In the spirit of a bitch and segue, yes. there yeah. are there are certain things that uh, from you know like Back to the Future that oh, we do yeah. have now. In fact, the hoverboard that I think Stephen did you actually get to try it, Stephen? I it came it. one yes. year early. I wrote it. Oh, yeah, I was on it. You were this a trendsetter. So How? No. Okay. So I wrote the story about Tony Hawk doing it and. Yeah. This was weird because before Tony Hawk was on the faked video that was remember the Back to the Future oh, right. yeah. Craft, yeah. Yeah. and he was on it and then he had to do a separate YouTube video going sorry you guys thought that was real you're stupid but you're not like he was trying to be <laughs> Tony Hawk's a nice guy so he wasn't like hey you guys are stupid I can't believe you did that and believed me but this is real so the Hendo That's this real. is a real thing and um, <laughs> you have to be on a metal surface, a yep. conductive surface. So how were you able to do these tricks? Were you able no, to? No, no. Actually, oh, okay. I was so scared I was going to break it or damage it because it's like a ten thousand yeah. dollar board. Yeah. So I was just being really careful, and you know, there's no inertia. There's nothing right. to stop you. So if you just start spinning, you're spinning forever. Yeah. yeah. Like a you know, like a planet yeah. in the yeah. universe. Yeah. Tony Tony Hawk was showing that, and to be <laughs> seasonal, he's like a dreidel. Yeah. Oh, and then he nice. falls um, off of it, and he and the b- board goes boom right there yeah and you know i'm sure all the guys in there that work on it were like tripping out but at the same time they're like tony hawk just yeah, wrote it's, ours it's tony yeah. hawk. You know i mean yeah. tony hawk it's like he's it, allowed to do he's this. probably got ten thousand dollars just in case yeah, yeah and i'm sure i'm sure he has his own of this i mean just the this, promotion of this with tony hawk on it so when it. i wrote this story I, I definitely did the video of him on it and you can see it there but he also was reporting with one of his journalist friends who also wrote it? Um, I can't remember the name. It wasn't Vice, but I think it was another. It was like a skate- ride. Is it ride? Ride. I think it's, it was uh, ride. Is that's a, Tony Hawk's YouTube channel. Yeah, ride. yeah, yeah. And so, but he also wrote for some. It wasn't Thrasher, but it was like some skateboard. Maybe it was Thrasher. I don't know. It was some skateboard pro skateboard um, magazine, and they said it was kind of like riding a. Uh, was it a slide board? Which I've never been on, but it's like. I don't know what a slide board. It's is. something where it's you're so, you don't have much control over it. So it's not that like a skateboard. That sounds where, like walking through a door. For yeah, it's, it's like a skateboard. It becomes part of your body. Surfboard becomes, you know, when you're when you're an athlete. Oh, okay. When you can do that, you can control it. But this was like all over the place, like a slip and slide. And so uh, Tony Hawk was even like, I don't, I don't know if, <laughs> like, he's not going to be doing uh, any sports tricks on this anytime soon. But what he did in the video, at least, he did pretty good. He did pretty he was well on the, on the half pipe. I mean. I felt like if you got really aggressive on it, you could do cool stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to, like he's being really aggressive. On right. It. It's hard to do. And he, he pulled off some, yeah. some cool and He moves. was going back and forth and it was interesting. It's just, you can't be on the board for too long. I, and apparently at, there's batteries, some battery <laughs> issues. It's not solar powered yet. It's not powered through your awesomeness to ride. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, you know, they'll work out the kinks and, It'll be available to public, but it's not available to public right now. It's well, a, did you see it was a the Kickstarter DIY though. one? The DIY oh, one yeah, is yeah, killing. Oh yeah, yeah, Do you have so video of that? Amanda, yes. Amanda wrote about that. Amanda Kuzer wrote about it. I think you've probably got the the story there, Stephen. There's a DIY one that's made basically from I think three or four air blowers. Yeah. I mean, it's basically <laughs> like a yeah. Yeah, yeah. He used four air blowers, and he he used like a a oh, water wow. ski. He found like a water ski on the side of the road. Look at that kid. He's like totally in shock. I love it. And he rigged it up. With these four, uh, you know, these four leaf blowers, oh basically. God, how loud yeah. is that? Yeah, thing? I was just it's thinking loud. that. It's so loud. Like every mom who sees this video is just like, I hope my teenage son doesn't do this. I hope my teenage son doesn't do this. <laughs> you can actually see leaves blowing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this one's cool because you can go on any flat surface. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and he's going to perfect it. I mean, this is like a prototype. He's not wearing any protective gear. Yeah, he's not wearing a helmet. Oh, right? dude. <laughs> but uh, he's so you working know on means. making it more, the airflow more you know powerful and he's working on making it quieter too yeah so. i hope so i mean look how diy that thing is. yeah so cool you know cool. if you, you can do go a, on water though if you do a search you might for, be able to yeah like for a but you don't have power as yeah, they say exactly. back in the future. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you do a, look at all those kids going i'm gonna ride if you do a search for diy hoverboard uh there's a lot of people in the community that try to make things like this and on youtube there's plenty of do's and don'ts uh i recommend you don't put some stranger's kid on one right away like the, i like the this kid. kid he just kind of stands on it and then he's like okay i'm gonna jump off he's a future marvel hero he Look falls at off then some yeah. other dude like jumps it's like off. an origin story waiting to happen so well, I think this means, does this mean Robert Zemeckis is like the new Nostradamus? Because, I mean, in, 
it, in Back to the Future 2, that was set in 2015. And so yeah. they're only off by like six months. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. He's no uh, Ridley and, Scott, though, because I've been waiting for that Blade Runner LA to happen soon. That's not. Yeah. Aside from the uh, food and, carts. And, and so also is, did. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you, I think you were going to say the same thing, Kelsey. This is not the uh, only Back to the Future 2 technology that became <laughs> real this year. There was also the auto lacing shoes yeah. from that movie are also now a thing. Amanda wrote about that as well. And then she actually, didn't she have the, yeah. the other shoes, the light-up shoes? Yeah, she, she had the light-up ones. Yeah. These are the lace-up shoes. I, I watched this video. There's not really anywhere where they demonstrate how they lace. Of course not. But uh, <laughs> there's secret. a lot of people doing backflips in the shoes, which is Yeah, well, cool. that's what you do when you have auto-lacing shoes. You're <laughs> oh. able to all of a sudden parkour and well, break dance. I got to get me some of those. Yeah. But they do look cool. They do. Yeah. I have auto-lacing shoes. They're called Vans. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm wearing some right now. Yeah, they're called We Gave Up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody Sorry. in the chat room wants more active hypercolor t-shirts, which I, do I don't too. know if that makes me oh, sad. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I still have junior high nightmares from when I had a hypercolor oh, totally. color shirt and someone kept patting me uh, on the butt. And so it looked like <laughs> I was being molested by a ghost. It was not good. And also, if you're a naturally sweaty person, like or just I am, hot. or just hot, yeah, uh, like... Yeah, those areas just never yeah, turn you're, back yeah. to their normal You're like color. a predator's dream come oh, yeah. true well, see, because you're always do, glowing. They, uh, these shirts, they make the panels just like <laughs> yeah. in the front yeah. instead of the whole shirt. Right. Yeah. Although that has like problems heart. too. Yeah. yeah. It's so sad. An, another another futuristic uh, technology that we reported on this year. Anthony, uh, you wrote about – there were two jetpacks, and I wrote about <laughs> one. It was demoed at the Smithsonian, um, and that like actually is a <laughs> vertical – you know, flying jetpack, but the um, and it does. It's been around for a few years, actually. But yeah, the, it was demoed at the Smithsonian this year. I want one uh, of these. Yeah. And it, it's pretty interesting. How how are the FAA go, rules on this thing? I guess if you're inside the Smithsonian, they can get you. <laughs> yeah, get that plane out of there. Uh, there it is. Wow. Oh my I want god. That. That's what we all want. Oh my god. So that I don't know if that's the same guy that did it, but at uh, at Star Wars uh, celebration of. Uh, three or four i think it was <clears throat> they had some guy dressed exactly like boba fett doing that nice. and he came in and it was so loud it was like supersonic loud and he came in as boba fett with the jet pack and landed to start the star wars <laughs> convention and it was like this big deal but because it was so loud and deafening people are like, yeah we're not gonna do that again and apparently faa aren't too keen on people jetpacking around without <laughs> a lot of permits <laughs> signed and professional <laughs> Uh, you know, people doing it, not just some guy DIYing it. So, well, there's a jetpack for running though too that Anthony wrote about. Mm. What was that one all about? Yeah, so kind of for running. So this was a it's a it's a prototype by an engineering student at Arizona State. Um, and so instead of a jetpack like you think of a normal jetpack that shoots you up in the air and you fly all around, this one shoots kind of concentrated bursts of air out of the back and propels someone forward so that they can move faster and the goal of this project uh, it's being developed for military uses to help uh, wow. you know soldiers who are in uh, combat situations get in and out of some place quickly to keep them safe as they're doing things like rescue operations oh or God. some kind of battlefield deals where they you know rescue people i don't know if they're in, <laughs> yeah, if they're in trouble on the battlefield they can just bail if they have to that is really yeah cool. they got a rocketeer out of there yeah i have a dumb question about jetpacks go for it um Okay, maybe soldiers on the whole tend to be thinner than I am, but I just feel like having something pointing straight down from my back isn't that going to run into your butt? I mean, oh, the yeah. Cardassian element. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, check it out. As he's running, it kind of, you know, it points away from him a little bit because he leans forward. Little, see. But what if he forgets to lean forward? Yeah. So He'll remember really what about quick. His <laughs> Actually, they're pointed straight back. At yeah, least, right? it's yeah. probably going to yeah. hit his feet. Yeah, it'll probably cook the back of his shoe a little bit. God, could you imagine tripping? And the Smithsonian one, he would have had like... <laughs> yes, actually, I can. No, I'm just thinking of the klutz factor on this. You have to be really coordinated because, man, skin knees have just gone up a notch if you fall on that. Mm. So, Or if you keep propelling yourself forward, I mean, you can't get up. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Into the ground. Oh, man. I'll keep I don't that know. for the reboot of Christmas Story. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Jetpack hoverboard combination. Oh, oh God, ah, you're onto something. That will That's happen. how you can get across the water. Yeah. Get on it, Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pit bull. Oh, <laughs> look at that. At least he's wearing a helmet. 
No knee pads, though. All right. So just a few other things that uh, became real. I'm just going to run down this list really sure. quick. This year, um, so we're looking at, uh, in, in the very near future, QR codes that actually activate holograms. Um, that's something that was released this year. So you, you scan the code, and then you, on your futuristic phone, you get a little hologram of whatever was embedded in the QR code. That was kind of cool. I like these um, QR code cookies. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get a cookie? I want one of those. <laughs> Help me, Obi Wan. You're the only one with the cookies. You know, somebody's gonna use it to rickroll somebody. It's gonna be oh. like one of the first things they do. <laughs> I like how uh, immediately we go to pranking as an option. <laughs> as soon as something works, then you figure out how you're gonna. Screw well, I'm with telling your you, mm -hmm. Tinder's gonna get a lot more exciting. <laughs> oh yikes! We can hologram uh, that. Star Trek communicators. You can get one for ninety nine dollars. I think there was a Kickstarter, and uh, I'm totally forgetting the name of it, but it's on it's on the link there, and it basically. Uh, and it works through Bluetooth, and you know it's it's kind of a uh, you create your own little local network, and but it works exactly like the uh, Star Trek communicators did. Those oh, are now ninety nine bucks. A little bigger, right? It's a little bigger and dorkier, but Look, it, it looks like you're wearing a doorbell pretty... on your shirt. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it is a doorbell. Not that there's anything wrong with yeah. that. I'm just saying. Because us us Star Trek fans never have a problem with looking slightly dorky. Not me. <laughs> yeah, Somebody I love that actually, that guy has a rocket. Wait a minute, what was it? What's going on in that video? Back up a little bit. No, they're doing a they're doing a little rocket thing oh, for their okay. kid's birthday. It's uh, cute. I was gonna say, what um, military uses does this have? So that's so you can communicate with people while you're on your jetpack and hoverboard combo going across the water. Yeah, it's like walkie talkies. Mm -hmm. It needs to be smaller. It's too big. Yeah. yeah. It, somebody actually, it's either like I saw pager. a photo where they put one right next to a doorbell, and it really is like the exact <laughs> size. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I love funny. it. So, um, Star Wars blaster bolts. Scientists actually showed us what those would look like in real life. You know, they're they're physically, you know, an, an actual blast, uh, and it's a lot less impressive. It turns out. Um, still it looks cool. Is that in slow motion? It's cool. <laughs> They have it slowed down. Is that a right? high school hallway? There we, yeah, there it is slowed down. <laughs> what did they use to do this? I don't know. I didn't write the, the story. Force. That, guy standing in, <laughs> that guy's going to get shot. The Force. He's no, a hologram. He's not, not if they're stormtroopers. Yeah. Stormtroopers can't hit a bar barn or a broadside of a wampa. Nothing. You know, it's interesting, though, because like I said before, how much has sci-fi ruined real science for us? So when somebody calls something a Star Wars yada yada, we instantly are like, this is nothing like a Star Wars whatever. And it's yeah. it's frustrating because you shouldn't call something a Star Trek blah or Star Wars blah or Doctor Who blah unless it actually really looks like it. it kind of well, does, I think we're though. the ones it calling it Star Wars stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, wait, okay. Yeah, you guys. oh, I see. So it's us journalists, <laughs> not the actual scientists calling yeah, it. Yeah, I don't this. think it's in the marketing. Oh, <laughs> I, think, I think I think that's us. Well, going, yeah, I wait, think they really like don't want to put it in the marketing because then they get you know yeah. Yeah. fancy letters. It, well, it's like we learned. It's kind of like during the '80s when we had the Star Wars when Ronald Reagan used Star Wars. As, oh, yeah. And that's like that's not Star Wars, but we got so excited that it was said by Tom Brokaw on the on the nightly news <laughs> that we let it slide. But this time, I don't know. Like it, you have to be careful. Like some of the Back to the Future stuff. Yeah, it's very much like sort of kind of back to the future stuff but when you say star wars i don't know i think it's like a like a double-edged sword kind of thing because it's like these movies are inspiring people to try to make things yeah. mm -hmm. that are like the things that they see in the yeah. movie but using the actual technology we have right it's never gonna be quite although if you told me when i was a kid that i'd be able to you know watch the super friends on a phone that i could hold in my hand and I take know. with me without any cords or anything that's true we tend to forget them like the mundane aspect well, of some of this dun, 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 dun. I mean, even even Jets, even Jetsons had Skype. <laughs> and it's sad that that came from me. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I tell you what, why don't we just forget the real stuff? Because we're almost out of time. We haven't even touched, we haven't even touched on like our, our sci-fi fantasy Marvel oh, right. geek outs for the year. Oh. Uh, I mean, just some things I had from the past year. I mean, I, everything <laughs> is became Legos this year. 50 year anniversary of Star Trek, new Star Wars trailer, Doctor Who. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, so much stuff. Interstellar. So much great stuff this year and really becoming more mainstream. What was the most exciting, you know, um, fictional stuff for you guys this year? Mm. I've got some, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, I think Captain America, the Winter Soldier was a big deal. You know, it, it upended the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. It showed that we aren't all just waiting for another Avengers movie, um, which, <laughs> which 
which Dark Thor Two Dark World did not yeah. pull off. Twenty nineteen. But I think for me, the, really, the probably the biggest geek movie thing of this year is it's the last Hobbit movie. I mean, I don't know if oh. you all remember before the Lord of the Rings movies. It used to be that fantasy movies were guaranteed trash, and and Peter Jackson changed all that. You know, I'm sure we all have differences with how he adapted them, but he really brought in a new era, and that era is now done. Yeah, he he single handedly made dragons sexy just through <laughs> casting. Go <laughs> say it. Go say it. Cumberbatch, way to go. I I you know I honestly I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Obviously, mooring the Star Wars stuff right now, but I was so excited about Guardians of the Galaxy because I wanted a smart ass crew of heroes, and I love Avengers, but Guardians just really had so much heart to it, and mm. I loved all the DIY projects that came out of that. I mean, I was writing so many Groot stories for Crave. I, would, I think I was on, uh, I had to be sanctioned for over it. But uh, my favorite <laughs> one, really yeah, it was like I had a Cumberbatch band and then a Groot band. I don't know if one can merge into the other, but I would appreciate it. Uh, I did the Groot swing uh, for Superfans build, and I was so excited at that new web series that started. Um, and someone built a giant Groot swing for this little kid. I and saw that. I just love any DIY that comes out of uh, sci-fi and fantasy and um, any of those movies. So thank you to James Gunn and Nicole Perlman who helped write it and all the special effects for Guardians of the Galaxy to actually inspire us to make our own Groot toys and Rocket Raccoon Lego and everything. So thank you. And mixtapes. And mixtapes. Oh, yeah. Brought back mixtapes. Yep. Thanks. Now when I play mixtapes on my Walkman on the airplane, <laughs> little kids won't look at me like I'm a weird freak from history. I feel like Ichabod Crane every time I use a Walkman on a plane. Like Kids are just like, what's that? I don't remember him doing that in that story. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, well, have you been watching Sleepy Hollow? I don't watch that. Oh, God. Okay. What, so, what about you guys? <laughs> yeah. So, Jeff, um, yes. the Batman in the YouTube um, chat room wants to know if we heard about the Aquaman movie. Isn't that like your dream come true? Or am I imagining things? Um... Uh, does it have to be a good dream for it to come true? <laughs> um, I thought you were an Aquaman fan. Am I that's Steven. That no, no, no. That's that Steven. Me. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was that's excited. It. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was excited, yeah. I mean, Aquaman's cool. He's totally cool. <laughs> He's not my favorite. Uh, I don't have a tattoo of Aquaman. What do you think, Steven? I just thought it was Will cool because gills? they talked about it on Entourage. And that was oh, right. <laughs> I know, Entourage <laughs> is the new fun. future. And the, uh, the guy who made 300 and uh, The Watchmen is yeah. directing it, right? So Zack, Zack Snyder? Snyder. Zack Snyder. Yeah, yeah. Zack oh, Snyder's right. also producing the new Wonder Woman movie. I had to put that in there because I've been waiting for a Wonder Woman movie since I was a little kid. And I love Linda <laughs> Carter, but this better be good. This better be good. It this matters. better be good. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Anthony DeMonica? What did you geek out on this year? Yeah, there was. I mean, there was, there was a lot of good stuff this year. So we've... Uh, We've obviously got Star Wars Force Awakens. We've gotten so many. Mm -hmm. We've gotten trailers. We've gotten leaks. We've gotten a lot of stuff that's getting us excited for 2015 there. Uh, as Kelsey said, the the Hobbit series is coming to an end, uh, I think, tomorrow or tonight even. <laughs> yeah, is, it opening, is it opening on Friday? Think, is it opening this no, Friday? No, it opens. I can. It's 7 p.m. tonight in, mm. in our local theater here. So I think officially it opens tomorrow. Some places it probably opens tonight. Um, I've been coping by posting a lot of the <laughs> Hobbit and Lord of the Rings stuff this week. Um, Anthony, the one you're doing today, did you do that already with the cat box? <laughs> yeah, that just went live. I noticed that. That just went live. That was number two in the uh, the series you mentioned, Bonnie, the super... Uh, yeah. I'm blanking on the name of it now. But... No, we have so many great geek cat like crafts, and it's like a litter box that you a cat can poop in in Middle Earth. I love it. Look at that. Look at that. And that means awesome. comfort. Oh, I want it right meow. I swear to God, the first thing I thought of was you shall not piss <laughs> <laughs> and i was really disappointed Aww. that they didn't use that for the for like marketing yeah. i'm really in the wrong line it's like one cat box to rule them all yeah it's it's honestly i love that i mean we've been doing a lot of hobbit stories on crave like the hobbit places you can rent uh yeah i think that was a gallery that went up today yeah yep. um and all the condos that people are like redoing to look like inside hobbit holes and that's, stuff and that's actually pretty yeah, that's pretty awesome crafty. Like, i know that's, that's just smart yeah, that takes some real level of fandom, but I love anything with cats. So, like, the idea that there's a cat box that looked like Middle Earth, at least doesn't look like Sauron. You don't want burning cat litter. Mm, not that's, not a, that's not a smell that you want in the house, but <laughs> I will... Oh, but there is a little... A scratching oh, post. there's a scratching oh, post. Yeah. That's even better. That's pretty awesome. That's yep. pretty great. I love Break.com with their stuff. They also did, they did the Groot thing. Mm. They did the Groot swing. 
and break. All down. right, guys. So what do you think? Final thoughts. Was was 2014 the geekiest year ever? Um, no. Nah, for for well, me, it was. For me, it was. I think it was pretty geeky. I can't remember a year that was geekier. 1977. That's the year I was born. Uh, uh, Star Wars. Uh, I will say that this has been a really geeky year, but I'm hoping 2015 will be even geekier. Yeah. I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. I'm kind of overwhelmed by all the movies that we were told about this year that are coming out. Like, Bonnie, you did that post with all the upcoming Marvel movies. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we are losing the Hobbit series, but it's like we're just oh, jumping man. into a whole new future of superhero movies. And, and not, it's not just that. I think we also more. did a Crave story on every single reboot that's being made into a TV show. <laughs> right, so right, you've right. got Stargate and my ne- mm-hmm. Minority Report. Well, Stargate's going to be a movie, but We've got Netflix Minority and Report. Yahoo's new platforms for video that we didn't I know. have before. I mean, if you're a geek right now, it's awesome because there's really an embarrassment of riches of things to watch and participate in. So, And Eric um, and Amanda, you guys have been covering the space program yep. like crazy. And it gets... And I don't know. There, I don't know that anything huge is planned for 2015, but you know, in the next five years, we could. I mean, there's almost half a dozen like gigantic telescopes that are planned that are like three times as powerful as what we have now. Uh, and then you know, we, you've got the the launch of you know, we're really beginning to seriously look at um, putting somebody on Mars. Uh, I will. It'll be interesting to see if Mars One, that kind of reality show Mars thing, actually goes anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much is going to actually materialize next year, but over the next five to ten years, it's just it's literally a whole other universe. I will say, though, if you're a big fan of sci-fi and you're a big fan of sci-fi predicting future things, I highly recommend Black Mirror, which is a UK Oh, my God, show. that's amazing. <laughs> and yes. It's kind of like it's been it's been called the like Twilight Zone meets futuristic sci-fi. And I know a lot of Twilight Zone fans are like, no, it's not like that. But I do think it's like that. It, they're, each episode is its own episode. They're not linked in any way. But they have some really interesting uh, foresight of what they think technology is going to be doing to our society as far as how social media is treated, how um, memories are going to be implanted. So you're going to be able to rewind your memories. So you, when you have fights with your girlfriend or boyfriend, you can really show them what they said. Still as not going to matter. Guessing. <laughs> Still not going to matter. Just going to guess. Um, and and <laughs> interesting ideas about what happens if you get incarcerated, incarcerated in prison. Could that be like an amusement park? Or could you have a reality show where all the reality contestants might be kind of like slaves but they're wanting to be that because they want to be famous there's a lot of interesting uh you know pop culture as well as social commentary in black mirror it's on netflix so you can watch all of the first two seasons and uh there's a christmas special with john ham coming out <laughs> which will be Ooh. very interesting so i highly recommend it if you like watching sci-fi to see if it predicts future things for reels i i second that motion and i i think we could we could go on for forever but i, I suggest <laughs> taking the conversation over to twitter uh at crave uh, we're like 10 minutes over now so uh oh, I, no. i'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye for uh, all of us here at Crave. Thanks for joining the Cravecast uh, again. CNET.com/slash/crave for all these stories and much more. I tried going through them all earlier and I just <laughs> couldn't. There's literally <laughs> thousands. Um, so check it out and uh, check us next month. Happy holidays, happy New Year, and we'll see you next time.